Hi, welcome to Detention, where we pretend to know what we're talking about when it comes to D&D. I am your host, Battlesmith Tristan. To my right, we have Artillerist Sam, and to my left, we have the Alchemist Brandon. God, the one I hated the most! <laughs> That's okay, I didn't get my favorite either. I know, I picked the one. You made <laughs> the choice. I did. Ha! Speaking of making things. <laughs> so today, we're going to talk about something kind of exciting here. We're going to talk about the newest class to D&D. Uh, this is the first new class in about over 10 years, I think, it's been yes. said. So new a, class in the using traditional official, classes. Yeah. yeah. Using traditional... For, I know 4th edition came out a long time ago, but those classes don't count in this. <laughs> I'll let that be known. So today we're going to be talking about the Artificer. The Tinkerer. Now, the Tailor. <laughs> the Soldier. The Spy? Let's talk about that. Cue the mythical morning <laughs> intro. God, just say it. <laughs> um, References. I can use it in the tags. <laughs> there's a bunch of things that artificers are. That's why people are so excited about artificers. It's because one, they're the uh, second main class to use this third total uh, class or subclass that uses intelligence. As their spell casting modifier. Right. That would be Wizard, Eldritch Knights, Artificers. Right. Which is hella cool, because now you have that big brain power. Right. So with Artificers, I, you guys have been looking into it for a long time. You guys have made several when it was on Earth Arcana, and not official, and all that stuff. So you guys are definitely going to be kind of in the lead when it comes to discussing Artificers, and I'll just chime in on certain things and maybe read a couple of stats. Uh, but... No. Can you guys handle that? Yes. I'll let the artillerist go first so she doesn't shoot me. All right. So, you have to think of artificers like al- like arcane or alchemical scientists. They're they're really into like tinkering and modifying things, but then giving it like that magic flair. Um, you kind of have to think about it as like a more like broadened and thought out version of like a school of invention wizard. Like they're they're very much like. Oh, I'm gonna take this little scrap metal and I'm gonna turn it into a powerful wand that's gonna give you plus two on your attack rolls. <laughs> or I'm gonna put all this together and make a little spider that sews up your wounds for you. Or I'm gonna make this protector that's gonna attack you if you come near me. Or my favorite one is, or I'm going to summon in an artillery machine to shoot you from afar. Basically. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I always imagine them as, uh, just as the premise of alchemy in general, where it's magic science melded, and yeah. just expanding on that idea. The law of equivalent exchange. Tan! <laughs> no, not full metal alchemist. Dang, you uh, stuff that. So sorry. We're going to start losing limbs here and brothers. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so they, they typically, you know, this comes from the Eberron uh, world setting. Um, so, you know, in Eberron, they've sort of harnessed this arcane magic um, and use it as a form of science. That's where Warforge come from. That's literally, Basically. that's like the the embodiment of shoving, like, magic and, like, life into, yeah. na- like, inanimate objects. Yeah. So, you know, as these, as these sort of, like, scientific beings, they're, they're very excited about, like, new metals being found or new, new types of science or sources of elemental energy. Like, no. that sort of thing really excites artificers and, and gets them thinking, like, oh, how can I use this new thing to power this thing? Or, you know, they, they like making those connections, and that's, you know, where that intelligence casting comes into play is is using your knowledge of the sciences and incorporating that into magic. So a wizard uses their intelligence to bend the weave of magic to whatever they want and warp reality. Artificers take what's in reality and empower and embolden it and make reality uh, to me more fun. So if that's the easiest way to distinguish is like, well, what's the difference? Why can't an artificer, why can't a wizard do that? They can, that's why the School of Invention exists, if you're focused more on the like the arcane weave. Right. Artificers are taking inanimate objects and things and making them into something new and grand and powerful and awesome. Yeah. Rather than making from thin air, they get down to the nitty gritty. What's, what's that girl from the uh, support class in My Hero Academia? I don't know her the name. Crazy-eyed girl, the crazy-eyed girl with the quirk, pink hair? Yeah. That's, like, when I imagine, like, Artificer, like, that's kind of what pops into mind. Is they're, like, a little bit, like, excited about this, like, they're passionate about it, but, like, they're also a little crazy about it, too. Like, <laughs> there are a lot of Artificers uh, make 
things that aren't useful, and then artificers, they also make things that are weapons of mass destruction, yeah. but also weapons of safety. So there's a, there's a wide range of what an artificer can do. So taking that into mind, I think in consideration, if you want to make an artist, artificer, when you make an artificer, you should uh, make an you artificer. Make one that engages with your sense of creativity and what they'd want to make. The easiest way you could do is, I want to find the blueprints to make an infinite energy machine. Go for it. Uh, see, I think of it as, uh, like in my head, like an artificer is one of those, uh, like a scientist who started making his scene on TV products, <laughs> where they have like the background in heavy science and can do science. But they're like, but in my free time, I've made a refrigerator that fits on your desk. <laughs> Yeah, kind yeah, of. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and I think that, that can you can sort of play those things up a little bit. You know, if you want your artificer to be more of like a ridiculous type character, they I mean they can be that ridiculous type. They character. can be the kooky, crazy artificer. I or made they this can be the more serious, <laughs> more like more like stoic type who has like maybe they have that one purpose is to find like oh I don't know a way to like keep themselves immortal forever. Through like metallic and like, my organic one, means. My one sort. goal is to gain infinite knowledge through the use of the biomechanics that I have created. I must learn everything. Or, I mean, you have, there's, uh, this is because there's the Soul Stitch, the homebrew uh, race that Making I, Frankenstein's monster? Yeah, essentially. Horrifying. So you, you'd be a, yeah. an artificer would be the one that would create a, uh, a Soul Stitched, or if you were doing something like that. We'll get that. to making into living things. That's. They have that ability. Oh, <laughs> they saying. can do that. <laughs> so there's a lot of things, um, you know, and Eberron's where they're from. They also can exist. I mean, of course, in the material plane, it's really easy in the Forgotten Realms. There's an entire city of magic. But they also, if you want to, like, if you're doing this, just me, if you're doing Ravnica, the Is It Guild, which is all about magic and, like, using your mind, they fit perfectly within this. So even though they're a newer class, they're not so far out there that they can't be seamlessly woven into things. So yeah. don't be afraid to talk to your DM and figure out what kind of artificer you want to make, what their purpose is, and like how they fit into the world. Right. And as a DM, don't be afraid to allow an artificer in. Just read about artificers. Right. Or, you know, read more history. Well, continue yeah. watching this video. Please don't leave. <laughs> but, so... But, <laughs> But it, it's good to know more about the history of artificers that we're not going to cover in this. And think about how you can play into your own world. Right. We're going to give you the, the spine of your uh, creation. <laughs> but you have to go and flush out the rest. Right. And speaking of spine, as far as like a quick build for an artificer, you've mentioned several times that intelligence is probably going to be the first thing you pump into. And this is like a yeah, general recommendations for if you're building an artificer is going to be intelligence is first and foremost. Much like with any other spellcaster, you find that one... Use your spellcasting spell mod the first. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, this one, uh, the uh, book and everything recommends that following it up with constitution or dex, depending if you want more health or... Or not being in as much. Right. Yeah. They equate to the same thing. And uh, it suggests that you choose the uh, the guild artisan background. Which makes perfect your artisan. It makes <laughs> sense, but uh, if you go back and watch our episode on uh, background building, you can know that you can just pick, you know, anything, anything that else fits. that works for you. But yeah. guild artisan gives you the, the other necessary tools, pun intended, um, <laughs> to uh, make an artificer great. Yes. Yeah. So there are a lot of things that artificers get. There are... They're, the one important thing the artificers get, when you look at the artificer table, because every class has their table that shows you, the, you know, the level and what they get and everything, they have what's called infusions. Mm -hmm. So look at the table. We're going to get into infusions, but look at the table if you're not starting at level one to figure out how many you get. Yeah. Right. You don't learn. It's not like Wizard where you can learn more spells. The infusions you get are the infusions you get. So knowing the table will help you so you're not overwhelmed. Yeah. Right. But as a base point, artificers typically start out with, you know, their hit dice is 1d8 per artificer level. Which isn't bad. Um, and then their points of first level are 8 plus their constitution modifier. So, you know, keep that con high. Um, and you get 1d8 plus your con modifier at every level after the first. Mm -hmm. Which is great. Yeah. So, they're not the wimpy casters that some people think wizards, well, what wizards are, but, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, sorcerers can be where they're not as, you know, up in the fray. Artificers are in there because their proficiencies, they are proficient with light armor and medium armor. And shields. And shields. Wizards and sorcerers and warlocks yeah. 
Not don't, really armor people. No. So being a spellcaster that has armor, you're already putting yourself in an advantage. You don't get as big of a list of spells, but you get things that we're going to get into that you're going <laughs> to... If you don't want to build an artifice after this episode, I want you to send me a message and tell me why. So continuing with like proficiency, you're talking about weapons, you get, you're getting simple weapons... As far as tools, thief tools, tinker tools, any type of, uh, or any one type of artisan tools of your choice. If it's a tool, you get it. <laughs> yes. Uh, your saving throws are your constitution and your intelligence. <clears throat> Where'd that come from? Right there. And as far as skills go, you can choose two from arcana, history, investigation, medicine, nature, perception, or sleight of hand. And this is where you really get to choose as far as what kind of artisan you're uh, or I guess, uh, artificer in general that you're trying to be because yeah. uh, if you're going to be more are you much more into the magic are you much more into you know, are you a medical one are you in you know picking those kind of things as are you a that, sneaky one it could be that needs to steal things are you Q from James Bond could be yeah well we're making our usual level five after we're done going through everything it's just doing the flow um, you also How get I make him real quick since I'm taking the back seat to this. Sure. Yeah. So you also, your starting equipment and anything you get from your background, as everything, is two simple weapons, not one. You get two simple weapons. Woo! Uh, a light crossbow, which you'll probably be using a lot. Uh, your choice of studded leather or scale mail. I'd pick scale mail. And then thieves tool and a dungeoneer's pack. So those the proficiencies, you're proficient with all tools, but you start with thieves tools. Which is very interesting for an intelligence-based class like this. A thieves tool being your start. You can't, you can't switch. Yeah. So, at level one, you get magical tinkering. So, you know how to give those things you're tinkering with that little arcane spark. You're not necessarily able to imbue them with the full magic, the full might of the magical weave. But you're able to, you know give things small bits of magic that you use your artisan tools or whatever tools you're using to do. Um, you can pretty much, let's say I'm a uh, tinkerer tool. I take my tinkerer tool, which is my spell focus, and I go, beep, and touch the mug. I now can have this do one of four basic effects. That lasts indefinitely, and I can choose to end it early, or if I sadly die, it'll end. Um, I can have it shed light, five foot red, five foot bright, five foot dim. You know, whenever tapped by a creature, uh, it can be a recorded message, so you can totally mess with somebody. So I can have it be like, Boop. no, 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 not yours. And like that. Talking cup? Uh, <laughs> it can hurt from up to ten feet away. Um, it can't be more than six seconds, but it, whenever it's touched. So it can be like a, no, 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 no. Um, you can have it emit an odor or a nonverbal sound, uh, you know, and anything 10 feet away. A lot of this is in 10 feet because you're only doing a spark of magic. It's not a lot. Mm -hmm. And then you can do um, a static visual effect. So you can have words or shapes or lines or textures or any mix of those. Um, so I could have this look. I could go boop and then have all these images like have like weird wavy lines through them if I really wanted to. So that's kind of like having prestidigitation yeah. At the touch of your finger without using, making that a cantrip. Mm -hmm. You can't do everything it can, but you can do some things it can't so that you can really get into it and make something interact with somebody. I mean, I like the one where you can do a recorded message. So mm -hmm. you can have an artificer imbue something with it, and it lasts indefinitely. So if like, they're out of their shop, it can be like, touch here for service. Bing, I'm sorry, I'm not in the shop right now. Things like that. Yeah. yeah. Which can really liven up your world as a DM. Yeah. Now, did we want to go ahead as we continue, because uh, since I have the character building up, do we want to go ahead and... Gnome. Gnome? That's the... For me, a gnome is the tinkerer. If you remember back in our gnome episode, we talked about how gnomes are natural tinkerers. They're naturally working with artisan tools. They naturally, or societally, like to work with things like that to make new inventions. So a gnome artificer kind of goes hand in hand. I know we've done some crazy ones, but this one, I feel like, since it's so new, I want to give as much authority yeah. to making a good... Because everyone's seen good and bad monks. Artificers are so new, I want to make a good one, mm -hmm. so you can see an example of what 
cool things you can do with it. Yeah. All right. So as Brandon kind of mentioned before, um, your spell casting focus is basically like a magic item. So you can take like a fork and it can look mundane and sort of weird. And why are you just pointing a fork at me? Like you're going to attack me. And it's my like, tuning fork. <laughs> it's a wand. <laughs> like that's basically your thing is, I mean, and it sounds kind of silly, but it can also be sort of surprising in some ways. You know, if you're, if you're walking around with like a flask or something and you've imbibed it with magic, like most people aren't going to realize that, you know, you can really be helpful, honestly. And with, with in, imbuing magic into things, you can only do up to your intelligence modifier on a lot of things. Yes. So having that intelligence modifier real high, mm-hmm. five, would be great. <laughs> so you can do the maximum amount of imbuing of, there's a different way, like different things can be imbued with them and stuff. So keeping track of that is definitely a chore, but it's worth it. But it is important to mention that your tools are like your your necessary, they're necessary to you. You literally, you have to have them to cast spells with this mm-hmm. item. So if you if your tools get stolen, like your thieves' tools or your tinkerer tools, like, good luck. You got to give them their set. Um, so that is kind of like the hindrance on this class is, is needing that extra component. But it's kind of like, that's what you need. And if you pick the guild artisan background, you will have access to way more tools. So if you yeah. lose one, you'll have backups. Yeah. And the other good thing is... The after, at second level you can infuse items. Your infuse items can count because they're a one of your tools, so you can cast spells from your infused items, which is really cool. We're going to get more into that when we talk about the infused items, so you can like do some really wacky things with it. Uh, at with every spell casting, you uh, get cantrips, except for paladins. Womp womp womp. Uh, you artificer spell list. It's artificer spell list is a mostly wizard, but a little bit other things. They get like cure wounds and things. So look at that spell list in depth to understand, you know, what you get and what you're going to plan for. Yeah. Um, you can replace cantrips every time you level up. You also get additional cantrips later on. So if you level up and you don't, you're not using a cantrip or you pick prestidigitation, you're like, well, I don't ever use it. <laughs> get rid of that, pick a better one. You can also um, prepare new spell lists. By the way, which several cantrips. They don't get prepared. Is pretty cool. I mean, basically, you can spend like a minute per spell level on something and sort of tinker with your spell casting focus to re-prepare your spells. Which is so cool, but it also takes time. Yeah. So let's say you're doing um, a short rest and you want to trade them things out. You can. You just have to spend that time. Like you said, how long was it? Um, I believe it's one minute per spell level. So if you only have five minutes, you can go up to fifth level. And do one. But things like that. So it, it's it's a lot more useful than a wizard having to prepare it at the beginning of the day. You have them all. You know them all. You just have to spend time to tinker something so it has that magical property. Yeah. Like a spider that can weave cure wounds. If mm-hmm. you want to tinker that, your spider normally does... Uh, you web web yeah. oh, okay i want to do cure wounds let me just tinker that real quick that's if that's the way to think about it and I'll, we'll get into that more when we talk about more of the magic and your spell list will continually grow and your intelligence modifier um will always play into that it's just like a wizard intelligence modifier intelligence modifier for the love of god if your intelligence modifier by level three is not hopefully depending on the rolls at least a plus three modifier something to worry yeah so that's all of everything for level one, correct? Uh, kind of. The spellcasting ability, like we said, is intelligence. Um, you your spell spell save DC is eight plus your intelligence proficiency plus your intelligence. And then your attack is proficiency plus intelligence. And then ritual casting. You have the ability to ritual cast anything on your spell list if you have it prepared. Well, you don't not if you have it prepared. You don't have to have it prepared. You're able to ritual cast anything on your spell list if you're at the level to do it. That's important. So that's pretty much it when it comes to level one. So this is where you can, before getting super into spells, you can start to think about what you want your artificer to do. If you want your artificer to use magical wands to cast things, that's fine. If you want your artificer to be more of a tinkerer and do make things that activate, that's cool too. Just think about what you want to do or mix the two. Have some spells be wand or spell focus. Have other things be a spell focus. And for flavor, have it be, my favorite just the spider. Just pull out a spider and be like, Garum! Something like that. 
Whereas I'm sitting here going, I like the idea of a uh, alchemist who is a cook. Like he's using a ladle to cast all his Which spells. Which is technically a cool be a cooking tool. Yeah, it'd be a cooking yeah. utensil. Yeah. So it could technically work. Just, just ladle. <laughs> so then we get to a second level where we can infuse items. Well, did we want to go ahead and uh, start doing some of the level one stuff yep. here? What do we got to pick? So we got a, uh, we need a artisan tool uh, to pick first and foremost. How about jewelers? Ooh, that's a good one. I, I always like uh, like spellcasting focus that are like crystals or gems or something mm. like that. I like that. So, so then for skills, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, maybe sleight of hand because you're dealing with really small, intricate items. Yeah. So, and I like arcana. So sleight of hand and arcana. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. That means our dex needs to be high. Yep. Mm. All right. So then level two brings us to, uh, like you said, infusing items, correct? <sighs> We're getting into it now, boys. <laughs> So no, don't let this scare you. There, it, this is a lot to handle, and that's why this episode is going to go a little bit longer yeah. because we're not going to go into everything because there's a lot of magical items you can make, and you just look into those, mm -hmm. and they're all on nice lists. But using the infusions are very <laughs> uh, ranged. So in at second level, you can imbue mundane magical items. Just gonna keep using the mug with <laughs> magic. You can not like a spark. You're imbuing them with full magic. So you they get the ability to do things that, you know, could be a prototype or a permanent. It depends on what you're doing. And the infusions known are part of that inf artificer infusion. So for our level five, the amount of infusions we're going to know is only four. And we can only infuse up to two items at a time. Now, I said two items at a time. You can't do the same item. Each item can only get one. That's very important. You can't just stack things on top. I can't make this just the cup of infinity. Uh, <laughs> one at a time. So I can do the coaster in the cup. But So whenever you finish a long rest, you can touch a non-magical item and imbue it with one of the infusions. Thus turning it into a magic item. So yes. if there's something that detects magical items, you can make magic items now. Like, that's the... If we, it wasn't clear before, second level, you're making magic items. So yeah. there is a bunch of different infusions that some only work with certain kind of objects. Right. I couldn't turn this into uh, a cloak. Yeah. It's a cup. The cup just grows <laughs> But we can kind of go through some of the infusions really briefly. Mm -hmm. um, so some of them, like I said, have different um, prerequisites for them. So at this level, we won't be able to get all of them, but I'll just go over them real quick. So one of your infusions can be Boots of the Winding Path. Uh, which helps you teleport. Uh, you can get an enhanced arcane focused, uh, so you can get a plus one bonus attack. Um, it increases to plus two when you get level 10. Um, you can do an enhanced defense, which is a suit of armor or a shield that gives you a plus one to AC. It's good for you. Um, an enhanced weapon, so a simple or martial weapon gets a plus one bonus to attack rolls. Um, a homunculus servant, which is a six level. Remember how, yeah, you were, your eye just went like, wait, you can make a homunculus. Yes. Every... Long rest. If you want, if you if your infusion, one of you, you can pick different. Like you can just poof, yeah. make a homunculus, which they are a lot of things that go with the homunculus. There's a whole stat table for yeah, they've it. They've got their own stat block. They can hit things yep. with a um, ranged force attack. Pretty good. Um, you can get a radiant weapon, so you can imbibe it with some radiant uh, properties. A repeating shot, which is Ooh. really nice. Um, you don't have to basically load. It just sort of does it on its own um, as far as the ammunition goes, which is good. Um, you can replicate a magic item. Now, when it comes to replicating items, these are level restricted. Yes, but pick it. Yes. Because you can... Pick it. So let's just say you, <laughs> you... Maybe you have a bag of holding... And maybe you, I don't know, want another bag of holding. Your second level, hey, guess what? You now have two bags of holding. Now, don't put them in tight of each other. That causes a wormhole. <laughs> or do. See what happens. Just for fun. So the, 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 we're not going to go through them all. I'll just give you the second level list because that's the only thing we're going to get to. The next yeah. level is at six. So we can make an alchemy jug, which allows you to make any water or any Helpful. liquid. An arm blade. A bag of holding. A cap of water breathing. Goggles of the night. A prosthetic limb. A rope of climbing, sending stones, wand of magic attacking, and wand of secrets. Those are things you can make every day, and they last until you stop it. Or until you die. And then, even after that, these items will continue to be there until, I believe it's a number of days equal to your, equal in, to your intelligence, intelligence modifier. modifier. So, minimum one. 
Yeah. If you're a bad artificer. Uh, <laughs> maximum five. So let's say your friends need you know, the magical items you imbued them with to get back from this dangerous thing to revive you. They have five days if you have plus five, yeah. if you have a five modifier, which is great. Because that means your friends can be like, we're going to get you back. <laughs> the next infusion would be a repulsion shield. So it's a shield that gives you armor class and has four charges. So good. Uh, resistant armor, so you can choose a damage type and become resistant. And a returning weapon, so you can give a thrown property and a return property to a simple or martial weapon. So if we had an, uh, an, ar- uh, you know, an artificer on Bars and Nobles and... They walked over to Soren's hammer. Mm. And we're like, we're going to really make this meal near now. <laughs> now, the only di- the only issue is he would they wouldn't be able to do it with Mjolnir. They'd give him a different weapon. Yeah. Because you can do a non-magical item. Mm-hmm. But if you had a different hammer... Well, for example, Cal's new dagger is a returning weapon. So she, you couldn't give it to someone else, but you could give it a regular dagger yeah. and be like, there you go, you can throw both now. Yeah. Which cow would be like, yeah! The returning javelin. Ah! Just, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. do buy any more javelins? Yeah. <laughs> Once again, definitely. Yep. Yeah. It's also, it turns it into a magical weapon, so it has the magical weapon properties, mm. meaning if it does damage, it's magical weapon, so it ignores resistance. Yeah. So what can we choose for our infusions? I already picked one. Uh, he picked, uh, yeah, Brand went with re- uh, replicated magic item, which of course has its own list of stuff at level two. Yeah, okay. you get up to level 14, there's different, like, Two, six, ten, fourteen are all I different would say, spell uh, lists. Let's let's replicate a. Uh, how about a cap of water breathing? Breathing the water. Yeah. All righty, cap of water breathing. All right. So for another imbune, uh, we level two. Uh, oh, enhanced level weapons two. pretty good because that'll give you a plus one. Repeating shots really good if you have somebody. I pick repeating shot. Yeah, who uses uh like right. ranged properties. All right, we got two. This is all level two, by the way. Yeah. yeah. All this is level before two, anyone this is gets great. their subclass stuff. Yeah. Even you, you still have the ability to be like, oh, we're making it to level three, guys. <laughs> all right, so uh, we got two more that we can do. Uh, how about uh, enhanced defense and replicate uh, and uh, returning weapon? And Perfect. Yeah. Returning sort of weapon. cover all your bases. Enhance your ability to hit. Enhance your ability to defend. Replicate something and have you know a Bible magic. Yeah, this is where like uh, I'm sure if you're like okay, we're about to go into a battle and you're like, hey, your armor is not really great. We're gonna buff your buff your defense. Hey, you're the hard hitter. What if we made you hit a little harder? There you go. You can only do two at your current level. That's where I (laughs) stopped. But you you get every time you're infusing table like every time you get more ability to infuse more like different things. It goes up. So the max we'll get is 12 different infusion, which is all of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you'll be able to inf- do 12 different infusions on six different items. Yeah. So it's about half. Just think about it like that. However many infusions you know, you can do half items. If you know 10, you can do five. Mm-hmm. Things like that. So that covers <sighs> level two. <laughs> yes. So now we go to the third level where you can pick between the three subclasses, and we're going to go into depth on those after we go to the general mm-hmm. gist yeah. of things. Um, but what are the three? So the three are alchemist, artillerist, and battlesmith. Hmm, those words sounded familiar. Yeah. Alchemist, artillerist, battlesmith. Right. That's how that, that That's not how that no, works. No, no, no. I'm talking like in reality. Yeah. Wait, why am I an alchemist? We'll get into that. <laughs> I know what you said at the beginning, <laughs> but I've changed it. <laughs> I've changed it again. So, yeah, um, you know, the class features that you get at the higher levels, um, you know, as you level up, you do get, you know, obviously more infusions. Um, but you can also get certain things like uh, special features, tool expertise, uh, flash of genius, right tool for the job. Um, and so I would really look into some of these. Um you know, and and really take the time. This is one of those classes that I feel like you have to take the time to get to know. This is not one of those things that you can kind of just rush into. This is heavily based on, if I haven't made it clear, your intelligence modifier. Things, yeah. intelligence modifier. Like Flash of Genius, you can assist somebody with a check using your intelligence modifier. Right tool for the job, you're, like, making, you're using tools or making, like, yeah. thing, like producing magical items with, like, magical stuff. Yeah. Level 20, uh, Soul of the Artifice, you get a plus one bonus to all saving throws per magic item uh, that you are currently attuned to. Which, which is great. so, oh. mm. but 
at that level, at level 20, you can have up to six magic items infused at because once. You can be attuned to six different items as opposed to the standard three. That's at level 18, you get six. At level 14, you get five magic items, which is insane to think about. Yeah. Most people can only have three. Yeah. You get double that. <laughs> so that means your bonus is aiming there will be a plus six. Yep, <laughs> which is really nice. And if you're reduced to zero hit points but not killed, you can use reaction to end one of your infusions Causing you to drop to one hit point instead of zero. So, so that gives you seven lives. Your original life and one for each of your infusions. You'll lose the infusions as you go. Right. But if you want to keep being up to cast spells, drop infusions. Because yep. it's not like you're going to drop the items anyway as you're wearing them. <laughs> you infuse them. <laughs> Uh, one nice thing that I think is really great that we sort of skipped over, at 14th level, um, you can ignore all class, race, spell, and level requirements on attuning or using a magic item. So You just ignore it. You're like, hey, look at this really fancy leer that can do magic things. It's mine now, even though I'm not a bard. Oh, look at this. That are, it's required for me to be a dwarf to wear. No, 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 no. Looks better on me. Oh, I have <laughs> to be an elf for this cloak? Looks not great on hard. me. Yeah. So, yeah, magical items... Are kind of your bread and butter. So if you're playing in a campaign that doesn't have a lot of magical items, you are the source of them. If you're playing in a game that has a lot of magical items, you can use them. Yeah. There, you can't go wrong. There's no way you're not going to have magical items at least six by the time you reach level twenty. Yeah. Using this class, especially if you're replicating those magical items. Oh, I'm gonna make this. Oh, hey, it's for me. <laughs> I'm gonna make this. Oh, I should give this to the barbarian. Nope, it's for me. <laughs> you can also eventually at level eleven make like spell storing items. You can give yeah. items the ability to store spells. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane to think about. <laughs> Which I mean, I think is a really great idea because, like, let's say that you know you you want to be able to use alarm, but you know maybe it's sort of something that you don't want to always have all the time. So let's give your mug alarm. Yep. And wow. you can use it at night. Wow. Uh, yeah. And also, through all of this, you can craft, no matter what class you are, magical items. Yeah. But artificers do it better. Yeah. You get less time, less requirement of gold to make certain levels of magic items. So if you want to make a magic item, don't have to worry about replicating it and losing it if you like infusions change. You can make them for less cost. Make your DM infuriated, being like, I want to make this. Well, do you have the time? Well, because I'm an adept, yes. Well, so, the whole thing about is these artificers are kleptomaniacs, which is magic in general. Kind of. Yeah, basically. <laughs> artificers, the kleptomaniacs. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> so that is pretty much the general of everything you get without a subclass. You get better and better at magical items. Mm -hmm. Now, your subclasses, some subclasses in D&D &D with the classes, build more into... Niche corners. Mm -hmm. This is one of them. Yeah. You always have your really? backbone, but this is the one where it's like, oh, I'm going to take this, but I can still all do this cool stuff. Right. These, when you take them, you're like, this is the path I have chosen. Because yeah. that makes me think of things like wizards, where each school is such a direction of exact. Like you can pick other spells for wizard, but if you're doing like my favorite school of evocation, you want to pick evocation spells so you can get the most out of your abilities. Right. While monk, you hit then things with your fists. <laughs> that doesn't change, right? So, yeah, that's just the first thing that comes to mind when you think of like when you think of like the direction of these subclasses that can take you in. It's like, like with wizards, they're very specific. Yep, as far as what your, your what you sh what your path is. So, the first subclass for artificer is alchemist. Brandon's and favorite. You put the lime in the coconut. Yeah, exactly. we, they're, they're, they typically are the oldest of the artificer subtypes. Um, artificer. They're, they're pretty versatile, um, but, but they really do sort of focus on using their creations to either do damage or take life away or give life. You know, they, they, they as much as they don't sound like it, they can be a good battle artificer. Um, you know, you get Perfect. the alchemical spells uh, like Healing Word, Ray of Sickness, Flaming Sphere, um, Melt's Acid or Arrow, all the way up to Raise Dead and Cloud Kill. <laughs> Which, I, let me just, uh, hold on a second. I just, now, uh, um, does anyone have any? Oh, you, bing, put in there, and uh, Raise Dead. Ha <laughs> 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 ha! Just zombies. <laughs> so, you know, you might be sitting here and be like, oh, alchemy, eh, whatever. Uh, I don't but want to drink potions. It's kind of Better cool. than that. There's a yeah. reason that alchemy is the oldest, I think, you, or usually yes. seen. Like, when yeah. you think of, like, something that it would be an artificer, alchemy is, like, the, the classic kind of, like, 
the imbuing magic and doing science yeah. with it. And there's a reason it's been around for as long as it has and why it continues to be a prominent thing in, in the history of all this stuff. Is that it has its uses. And when you pick that third level, any empty flask you touch, it has to be an empty flask. It's very specific. You can't put it into my mug. Um, you flask. magically produce an elixir. Now, you can make it so you just go, like, pinky in the bottom and you just go, like, and you just, there it is. Or you can have it, if you want, you just take a few common ingredients and imbue magic and then make it. So if you want to make it more, you're actually making the potion. It's really easy to just flavor it. Uh, <laughs> just the weirdest bartender ever. Hey, mate, you need a drink. <laughs> Pinky, hey, yeah, have a good one. That'll be ten silver. <laughs> and they, they get better. Your uh, experimental extras get better at the higher level you get, much with everything. Um... Tell us how they work. So, with the elixirs, um, there's typically a standard six. There's healing, swiftness, resilience, boldness, flight, or transformation. They each sort of do what they say they're going to do. <laughs> um, swiftness increases walking speed. Resilience increases AC. Boldness, um, you can add a D4 to an attack roll. Um, flight gives you flight for ten, for ten minutes. Yep. Um, and transformation, you can cast alter self. You roll a D6, though. Mm. Yeah. There's no guarantee. But you roll a d6 for it. That being said, um, you, you know, more. as the higher level you go, um, you can get more than one per long rest. Mm. So yeah. And you also can spend spell slots of first level or higher to make more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you could inadvertently have, well, <laughs> hopefully, if you really want, um, three uh, <laughs> healing potions. <laughs> make your own. So that's one of the things that, I mean, it's all in the what, the experimental. That's why it's called experimental. You're like, whoop. Some people complain, like, oh, some of them aren't that good. There's not a single one on here that I wouldn't be okay with getting. Yeah, I In agree. In a pinch, it's a little different if you're hoping on one. But if you have these prepared because they last until you tank, you know, until you drink it or, you know, administer another one or things like that, or you're incapacitated, they last. Yeah. So if you just have them, then they're ready for if you need it instead of being like, oh, i got to make it. So... Yeah. What do you get level five? So at level five, you become an alchemical savant. Um, so you can develop a sort of command of magical chemicals. Um, you can enhance things. So whenever you use your spells um, using your alchemist supplies, you can gain a bonus to one roll of the spell. The spell can either restore hit points or be a damage roll that deals acid, fire, necrotic, or poison. Um, and the bonus equals your intelligence modifier. So you're basically giving yourself a buff to your attack or a buff to your healing um, based off of your intelligence modifier. And now we learn with our, uh, you know, artificers, if Alcan, and like if the supplies you use is your spellcasting focus, any spell you cast it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. one that fits into the spell list. Yeah. When you get a nine. So at ninth level, um, you have these things called restorative reagents. Um, so good. So whenever a creature drinks an experimental elixir that you create, that creature will then gain temporary hit points equal to 2d6 plus your intelligence modifier, hmm. which is pretty nice. So not only are they maybe healing themselves with an elixir, but then they're also gaining temporary hit points. Um, you can also hmm. cast Lesser Restoration without expending a spell slot oh, wow. and without preparing the spell, providing that you're using your alchemical supplies um, as a spell casting. Splash! Package. There you go. And the best part, you can do this a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier, and you regain all uses at, at the end of a long rest. So at ninth splash, level, splash. you can have... Hopefully five. Hopefully five. <laughs> um, to do this five times, which is pretty nice. I mean, Lesser yeah. Restoration's pretty handy. So Yeah, like... And, you can make it, you said splash, you can totally, it says just supplies, you can have an empty flask and just yeah. go, Yeah. That's true. Or maybe I just like the idea fork. of someone like just throwing, even hey, if it's just fork. like, hey, 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 I heal you. And what is your penultimate in the alchemist? So at 15th level, you become a chemical master. Um, you have been exposed to so many chemicals that they pose such little risk to you that you can use them quickly to just end certain ailments. So you gain resistance to acid and poison, and you're immune to being poisoned. Which is great. Which is amazing. And you can cast greater restoration and heal without expending spell slots, which is so nice. Like, you just became, like, the party's main healer because you don't need to waste spell slots for this. And you don't have to prepare the spell, and you don't need material components, providing, like, provided that you're using your supplies as a spellcasting focus. Once you cast either spell with this feature, you can't cast that spell again until you finish a long rest. Either spell. So either Greater Restoration or Heal, but it's really nice to be able to do that, like, just as part of your specialty. So that's just, you know, 
working with science. If you want, if you want, you know, I was like, oh, you play with that science kid a lot. There's your, there's your subclass. There you yeah. go. Now we're getting into my favorite one. Because I love this one. So when I read this one originally, I knew if I was going to make, if this, because when this came out originally, it was Unearthed Arcana. I knew this is the one I wanted to do. This is the one I wanted to make if this became official. It is the Artillerist. And that's why I changed it. Because I want the Artillerist. So, <laughs> so, think about it. Artillery. <laughs> think about it in modern day war. You are making magical arcane batteries, not batteries in like a electrical battery, like war battery, that you just shoot magic for explosive, projectiles, energy, force. You, It's just destruction everywhere, which I'm not saying I'm, you know, attack happy or anything with this, but you, you are, this is where the artificers for war came into play, was the artillerists. And I love the fact that some people like when Arthur, like when this class came out, and people were talking about it, like, oh, you're gonna be a backline, you're gonna be the support class. This is when you go support this, and you just blow everything up. You become proficient with wood carver's wood carver's tools, and then if you're already proficient with it, you get another proficiency, which is great. Guild artisan, you're proficient with everything. Right. Um, so you get your artillerist spells, and just like with the alchemy you get shield thunder wave to start out with Ooh. then you get fireball later on it's just a free prepared you don't have to worry about preparing that one and your final ones are cone of cold and wall of force so with the final ones and you i mean you get walls walls are important and we're going to get into that on why they're important right now this is probably the fav your favorite aspect of this i remember <laughs> when this came out and we were reading this and you're like wait yeah this is it, again it should, again just to bring that emphasis back is that you two have been looking into artificer for a long since time since it was unearthed arcana like we're gonna test it we're like give it give it give i it, feel give like give this it, was it. almost yeah. a year ago oh it was been yeah it was been a yeah. while and it's one of those things where even with it being kind of like you know with it being unofficial you guys have gone hard but i remember and, i was sitting on the stairs and i was reading this to you and you're like wait read that back. <laughs> Give me that again. So, using your woodcarver or smith's tools, I would prefer smith tools, um, you can create in an instant, magically, a small or tiny eldritch cannon in any horizontal unoccupied space within five feet of you. So, right now, I could just be like, right there, a small cannon. <laughs> um, you can't do it until you finish a long rest or if you spend a um, spell slot of first or higher, just like with the elixirs. Uh, it's a magical object, regardless of size, as an AC of 18. Name me a level 3 anything on your side that has an AC of 18 that's not wearing heavy armor. Yeah. And has hit points equal to 5 times your artificial level. So that's going to increase and increase. It's going to... Things are going to fight or are going to increase, but that's still something that you can place and walk away from because you don't have to be near it. And it's immune to poison damage and psychic damage. It doesn't have a brain. And all conditions, it can't be frightened. <laughs> there is going to try to charm There's that. no <laughs> way to frighten my My role is to seduce the cannon. <laughs> it fails. My <laughs> item of steel. Um, so uh, if it's forced to make an ability check or saving throw, it gets an ability score as 10 plus 0. And if the mending spell is cast on it, which you totally should, 2d6 hit points, which is great because that means you should be able to heal it at first level consistently uh it disappears if it hits zero hit points after one hour or i dismiss it early now that's the important part that last bit when you create it you determine its appearance and if it has legs also what type it is and there's a there's a table for it and we're getting into that this is, i love this one so much i'm sorry if i'm too giddy no you're um, fine i'd rather you be that excited about one each of your turns bonus action you can use it to attack as a artificer and a spellcaster bonus actions aren't really your thing so this gives you bonus actions. Yeah. Uh, as long as you're within 60 feet of it, which on a battle map, you're totally within 60 feet. You don't have, doesn't have to be line of sight. You can just... Also, as part of the bonus action, you can direct the cannon to walk or climb 15 feet if you give it legs. It has to have legs. Which you should just give it legs. I don't know why you would. <laughs> um, Legless. So, the Eldritch Cannons. There's the Flamethrower, which is a 15-foot cone... That I like, uh, you know, in a direction that I designate and adjacent to it. It has to make a deck save equal to the spell, my spell save DC, which is going to be pretty high. It takes 2d8 fire, 
or half on a um, successful save, and it light. This is important. It lights things on fire. Oh, we do. Do we, do we want to get out of here? No one's gonna follow us. Is this a wood building? Let me just put that turret right in the doorway and just <gasps> <laughs> force ballista. I'll say that words again. Force, force ballista. ballista. <laughs> Make a ranged spell attack, originating from the cannon within 120 feet. That's a massive range. Uh, on a hit, it takes anything takes 2d8 force damage. Uh, if it's targets a creature, it's pushed five feet away. So if someone's trying to like attack your thing, like get away from my baby. <laughs> Or protector. And this is where it's really good if you're trying to get someone away or hide somebody. It's not all death and destruction, okay? I'll admit. You, um, positive burst of energy that, you know, it grants temporary hit points to as a bonus action. Each creature within yeah. 10 feet of it. So if you're, you don't want bad guys there, but you can choose, it, it's, you choose, um, you know, what you want it to be, you know, whenever you create it. You know, you can't, you can only have one cannon at a time, and you have to choose what it is, but if you're going to put it in the back corner, guys, go get healed. And you don't have to activate it. It's not a force activation. So at fifth level, arcane firearm. <laughs> so you know how to turn on, you know, the basics. Oh, you use a wand or a staff or, you know, a rod. I turn this into a conduit for destruction. So... You can use your wood carving tools after a long rest to carve special sigils into one of the wooden, you know, focuses that you use. And then you turn into a firearm. The sigils disappear, um, and you can carve them again later. So you're, you're not actually, like, etching into it. You're magically carving it, which is good. Um, they last indefinitely, like all things. Uh, and you can use this as your spell cast. I've always for artifice or spells. And then you roll a d8, and you gain a bonus to the damage spells equal to the number rolled. Yeah. So if I roll a D8, I get a bonus eight damage. <laughs> Boom! You can take the next one. I won't take it. All right. I'll, so I'll... <laughs> at starting at ninth level, um, you get your explosive cannon, um, which basically increases its destruction. It you know you roll an additional D8, um, and as an action, you can command the cannon to detonate <laughs> with you if you were within sixty feet. Doing so destroys the cannon. But it forces each creature within 20 feet to make a deck saving throw against your spell save, and they take 3d8 force damage if they fail and half half as much as a success. So let's say you do make the protective cannon. And you do, and your enemies are over there like, ah, we're gonna we're gonna be over here by your cannon. Ah, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> and then self-destruct sequence. And then uh, you just go. There's my next one. Yep. And then level 15, you get fortified position. You have, you are the master at, you know, making a well-defensed, you know, emplacement of your cannon. So, if you are within 10 feet of the cannon, you get half cover. Okay. So, as a result, this, it, it pretty much, like, adds, like, a nice shield 10 feet from it. So, like, oh, we're going to hide behind here. Someone's going to try and shoot us. You just place a cannon. You now have... A shield in front of you. Mm. Uh, you can now also have two cannons at the same time. You can create two cannons with the same action, but not the same spell slot. You can I activate both two. of them with the same two bonus cannons. actions. One. You can determine whether the cannons are identical or not to each other. You can't create a third. But, that's two. I can at the same I time... Said, oh no, so you can I have can't one have more than that's two? That's giving you and your allies temporary hit points, and you can have another that's hitting your enemies with force damage. Which is just think about that. Like, let's say you're in you're in a cave and they're coming at you from one direction. You just go cannon here, blocking ten feet that way. Cannon there. We now have a half cover in front of us yeah. and to the side. And uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like a uh, one of those uh, the video games where you're prepping for a horde. Yeah, <laughs> my if you want to put this into a way, you can make a dwarf. This is what I would do. I know we may have known, but a dwarf uh, artillerist. You make Torbjorn. Build them up, break them down. Do, 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 do. <laughs> That's pretty much what you're doing. Is you're making a turret that you. There's different ones, but you make the ability because it's a bonus action. So as your action, if so, you're shooting, like, I'm gonna shoot that guy. Also, I'm gonna run over here and heal my friend, or I'm gonna run over here and cast a different spell. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you do that? <laughs> okay, I'll calm down now. I'm done. Brandon rant over. Mm -hmm. Just. That's okay, because you're just in time for a Sam rant. As I move on to my favorite type of artificer, which is the battlesmith. 
This I one's cool. This one was these guys. wasn't out originally when uh, this yes. one came out, and then they were like, "Oh yeah, Battlesmith." Yeah. So I really like these guys for several reasons, but I'll get into the reason why I love them later. Uh, to start out with, they get a um, they're sort of specialized with Smith's tools. Um, so you get the tool proficiency for Smith's tools, um, as well as you have that one, you get another type of tools. Um, your spells, you know, you can start out with Heroism and Shield, all the way up to Banishing Smite and Mass Cure Wounds. That's insane. These guys are kind of meant to be the more, like, Paladin-y side. They're a combination of, like, medicinal as well as protection type mm. Battlesmiths. Um, but there's, there's a really cool reason why I like them. Um, you gain proficiency with martial weapons. <laughs> and when you attack with a magic weapon, you can use your intelligence modifier instead of strength or dex. Which oh my is... Gosh. Amazing. Insane. This Especially is my number two. Yeah. This is so a... these guys are like, if you want to play a heavy frontlining spellcaster, ta-da! You found it. Yeah. I mean, because as we discussed earlier with the art artificer stuff, I mean, you're already proficient with a bunch of different uh, armors as well as shields. Yeah. Um, simple weapons. If you do this, that's martial weapons as well. That means they're right here. Yeah. I mean, you're someone who, like you said, if you're looking for like a like outside of like an Eldritch knight. This is, this is, yeah. you know. Yeah, this is your intelligence getting in there. And uh, let it be known that there are different, these all have the ability to heal using, in, like, as an intelligence caster. Right. Mm. That doesn't exist, really. Yeah. <laughs> Which is really nice. Now, my favorite part. At third level, you get what's called a steel defender. Um, you can basically create your own faithful companion made out of, you know, inorganic and, like, metal and then magic, and it's just, it's really cool. Like, you have, you have Steel Doggo there at your side, oh, and they have their own stat block, and they can attack, and they can heal you, and it's, it's great. I love them. They're so great. Um, really look into them, look at their stat block, because it's, it's so cool what they can do. The easiest way to, uh... Think about it is if you have give them a mechanical and they use a mechanical like mastiff. Yeah, and they can repair themselves. And they mending so, helps. Yeah, yeah. Mending does because they're inorganic. You can just go mending. Okay, you're back. And they also, as part of their attack, they can do force damage. Now, as we've talked about, force damage is less likely to have resistance. So mm -hmm. it's nice that they can do that too. All I can think about is like because I'm old in the you know especially in YouTube years. But, like, all I can think about is Techno, the robo-dog, that yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, now, it does, it puts, I love how they put this because it kind of makes it really sad, but also it makes sense. Just like you can't have multiple cannons and they go away after a while. After each long rest, you can create a new one. And it says the first one immediately perishes. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're into, like, heavy metal stuff and, like, killing things, and you're like, I, just, I don't want you anymore, you can just kill it. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there's a way you can also probably talk to your DM and be like, like, so can I just have it so that he doesn't go away? <laughs> you, I mean, you, it's, you're you transferring yeah. its mind. But. Yeah. I mean, we can get into a bit more of it, but like, for example, I have Catherock and he has a steel defender named... You have Catherock? We have We have Catherock. <laughs> uh, who is a battlesmith. He's got a steel defender named Diego. The way that I do it is I have Diego shut down during a long rest, and then mm. he's sort of re-imbibed with magic after... Long yeah, and you don't same. have to get rid of them, but if you want to like get a new one with nice, finey health, and you don't want to spend spell yeah. slots on it. And another nice thing about the defenders is, as you level up and as certain uh, numbers for you increase, like your proficiency bonuses, so do the defender skills. Mm -hmm. so. so that yeah. Um, now this is a spellcaster class, right? They use intelligence and they cast spells, right? Yeah. Can you explain the level five thing? So, starting at 5th level, you can attack twice. You're a spellcaster! They're going to attack what? twice! <laughs> <laughs> Name another spellcaster, you're able to go, yeah, I'm just going to get him, boy. <laughs> Next turn, cure wounds. Yes. <laughs> so, you can now attack twice as... That is... The attack action. So, you can... You, this is the one where if you're like, I have spells, I have my Iron Defender, I don't want to cast spells this turn. <gasps> bah, bah. <laughs> Welcome to pain, because you're an intelligence modifier, which is insane for me. You're this is the I think this is the first one attacking with intelligence modifier. I think when you're, you're right. using a physical attack, yes. Because I mean, I understand that you're using your brains to be like, ah, their weak point would be right there. <laughs> I was gonna say like, are you Zoro? It's like, alrighty. <laughs> I think of it. I think of it more like you're so in tune with like magic items and like different um, compounds and materials that like you would know like where that chink in someone's armor is or mm. where like the weak point would be. You know, that's what I think of. So what do you get level nine? So level nine, you get arcane jolt. 
So you have new ways to channel your arcane energy. Um, and so when you hit a target with magic or your steel defender hits a target, mm -hmm. you can channel magical energy through the strike to create an effect. So the target can either take an extra 2d6 force damage or you can choose one creature or object within 30 feet and healing energy flows into the, the chosen person or and thing. it restores 2d6 hit points. So if you want to heal uh, your... Iron Defender, it says object. You could heal your Iron Defender with that. If they're taking damage and you don't want to wait, like have yeah. them do a thing. Or let's say there's uh, a wall that you want to fix. It says object. Yeah. Maybe you're trying to keep people from breaking down a door yeah. to attack you're, you. You can. It's either health or mending heal door. without yeah. picking. And yeah. so you can get that a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier, but only once per turn. Bye. Yeah. And you regain all of them after a long rest. Um, at 15th level, both your Arcane Jolt and your Steel Defender become more powerful. Um, extra damage and healing um, of your Arcane Jolt both increase to 4d6. <laughs> your Steel Defender gets a plus 2 to their AC. And whenever your Steel Seven Defender seven. uses its Deflect Attack, the attacker takes force damage equal to 1d4 plus your Intelligence modifier. So your Steel Defender will have an AC of 17. That's higher than other spellcasters, and that's yep. just your little familiar. That's the highest AC out that, of any familiar. Yeah, basically, this is like your familiar, but <laughs> you can't attack. You can't <laughs> cast spells like, through it. And, it's a better familiar, but you can attack with it. Yeah, so it's kind yeah. of the trade-off. Also, your um, defender can't be surprised. So let's say there's a surprise round where everyone else gets to go first, and the because like, uh -huh. initiative happens, that ain't a thing. Your your iron your steel defender can attack. Your steel defender can go do its thing. Yeah. So. What so that brings us to the end. Yeah, I was going to say, so that brings us to the end of everything, which means that now, now that our character is level five, we get to pick one of the three. So I'm going to pick Alchemist. <laughs> you could. <laughs> Just so you two don't fight. Because <laughs> you're going to be like Artillerist, and I'm going to be like Battlesmith, and we're going to be like, ah! Artillerist is just. I, hold on. I, we're gonna, we can pick Alchemist. I'm just imagine, like, imagining a gnome. Which is a small size. No, yes, with, uh, with uh, jeweler's tools. With jeweler's tools. Who defends his shop with artillery? <laughs> well, I was so, almost thinking battlesmith because I can see a little gnome with a steel defender. But the, the it, it's small, or so the the thing maybe is the same type. It'll be a Chihuahua steel defender <laughs> with gems in its eyes. Fine, because it just so the, alchemist. The turret can be the turret <laughs> it can be small, so this person be able to just stand behind their turret. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's true. I mean, pick Alchemist if you want to pick Alchemist. No, pick I, Alchemist. I, I was doing fine. it so you guys didn't just, fight. I don't have just, a preference. Like, we just have our specialties. I well, think. I mean, because I like the idea of a gnome guarding their uh, their Bring shop with the, with the. Oh my! Because yes. then so it should be noted if I was uh, if anyone's watching the video, they think that oh no, Chris is not paying attention. I am. I'm actually just I'm trying to streamline some of this. I've been rolling stats. I've been rolling the personality traits and stuff like that. Uh, make it so it's a one d four. Or 1d3. Can't you do that? d4. One. So, Alchemist. Oh, that was... Oh. Oh. Two. Two. Yes. Artillery. So, one. So, Alchemist. Nope. <laughs> so, we're doing Artillerist? Artillerist. Then? All right. Let's go. He can be a jeweler. He has to protect his stuff on the road. Yeah. <laughs> I see some bandits coming at me. All right. And at level four, you got the ability score improvement. I pumped it into Intelligence and Con. As you should. Smart yeah. choice. All right, so then yeah, Who I need Dex when I'm shooting people. Right, so I rolled stats, and I originally had rolled 11 for strength, 14 in Dex, 13 in Con, 16 in Intelligence, 12 in Wisdom, and 12 in Charisma. Does anybody, would anybody like to change any of that? I would throw that 14 in Con. Oops. Yeah, flip, that. Uh, yeah, yeah, flip the Con and Dex. Yeah, it's probably just something I just missed when I was doing it. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. All right, so that brings strength to 11, dex is a 14, con is a 15, intelligence is a 19, uh, wisdom is a 12, and charisma is a 12. All right. All right, and then uh, that brings us to description. So uh, the name I have right now is Warbar or Wari Bar Munrig. Wari. 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 That works. Yeah. Guild uh, artisan. Guild artisan. I just figured it made the most sense. Uh, or at least merchant. Or both, technically, because they're makes, running a He's job. making his and selling stuff. So uh, the other tool I gave them was Smith Tools, because I figured if they're working with jewelers, they're going to need to work with metal. Yep. yep. Um, I did not choose another language yet. Um, What's the language of death? <laughs> Sorry. 
Dwarvish. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about Elvish? Because I imagine one who's going to work with intricate design. He's making design. nice, pretty things yes, for the elves. Yeah. Um, so as far as the personality traits, um, I rolled for these as well, as we often do. So for personality traits, we have, I believe that anything worth doing is worth doing right. I can't help it. I'm a perfectionist. Okay. Um, I also have, I'm rude to people who lack my commitment to hard work and fair play. And I'll shoot them with a turret. <laughs> <laughs> um, ideals is aspiration. I work hard to be the best there is at my craft. Uh, bonds, I pursue, I pursue wealth to secure someone's love. Yep. I'm going to buy your love. Yes. And flaws, I am horribly yeah. jealous of anyone who can outshine my handiwork. Everywhere I go, I'm surrounded by rivals. No one can outshine my turrets. Exactly. I should my shiny babies. I would blow them up. So, <laughs> and then, so that brings me to equipment. Uh, so we can do any two simple weapons. Uh... Doesn't really matter. No, I mean they're We're not attacking. This is not a upfront, our, our, uh, our, you know. So I imagine small search. things like a dagger and a crossbow would probably be two. Yep. Yep. Would be just two things. Oh, we already got a crossbow light. So get... so uh, let's do a boomerang. Sure. I was gonna say, was gonna say a mace. Yeah, a mace would work. Okay. Just so that you do have a close, you know, range thing that you can. Use. All right. Uh, we can do studded leather or scale mail. Might as well go with scale mail. Yeah, yeah. you can adorn that with jewelry. Yeah. All right, and we get Thieves' Tools and a Dungeoneer's Pack. Oh. As a Guild Artisan, we get a set of Artisan Tools of our choice, which... Uh, take those. Take the... Uh, well, because we need the Jeweler's Tools. They're proficient in them, but they right. don't we don't have right. them. So now we have Jeweler's Tools. Yeah, now we have Jeweler's Tools. So now we're going to do it. You can add a proficiency modifier. There yeah. you go. And then we get a letter of uh, introduction from your Guild, as well as a set of Traveler's Clothes and a pouch of 15 gold. Oh, this is so good. Worry is here to kill. Yes. I mean... To support. Wari is here to uh, support, support their shot. That's right. If he was here to kill, he would have been a battlesmith. Whoa! <laughs> so, yeah. So, I will be in shade and behind my turret. So, yeah. I, well, his, I was like, his AC is low. I was like, oh, wait, no. I haven't put on, you haven't put on any equipment. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that is, uh, so that, that is our artificer, Wari. Um, Wari Bar Munrig. Uh, or Murnig. Whatever. One yeah. rig. I like Warry. one rig more. more Worry yeah. one rig. Yeah. I did just hit the randomizer name. So it was like, actually, this is a goofy name. I like it. But uh, yeah, we'll probably change that name a little bit. Um, so yeah. So that is Artificer. Pretty thorough. And, th and I know this one, this episode's a little longer, but... It's a new class that hasn't been established. There's not tried and true tropes. This is... Right. I mean, there's been things in the if, past where you can make things. I think like. that this is a good class that if you are not used to playing a spellcaster or are intimidated by one, it can be scary. But if you're more used to playing a paladin or a fighter, take that battlesmith option. Delve into it. Get a little bit of magic in there. You're still playing a frontline character. Yeah. But it's... An interesting spell casting frontline character. Right. That I, would be your. This influence. is definitely one of those ones where if you're looking to do someone who's a tinker, especially past people who have played other editions where there was a tinker class. Yeah. Artificer. Yeah, artificer yeah. is what there you go. want. Um, Make them. Yeah, so it's definitely one of those things where if you're looking to play with it a bit more, like, it's like, oh, I want to, I'm want. i a scientist or an alchemist or something like This is definitely right up your alley. You don't have to do wizard. You don't do another spell caster. Like, boom, this is what you're looking for right yep. here. Um, so yeah, so this was a lot to consume. It, it definitely, if you're, if any of it sounds interesting, we always encourage you to do your own research. Um, as again, as I've always stated, magic is really hard for me to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> I am very much the point and hit. But there are a lot of people out there like you two who are very much all about this, and I'm sure there's plenty of viewers who are very much the same way. So I really hope that if this even remotely tickles your fancy, look into Artificer. It's it brand out. new. It's very exciting for a lot of people, and you're bound to find something about it that you'll find yeah. very useful. If you watch any of our one-shots, Brandon and I have a shared character named Cathrock Blackjaw, who is a Dragonborn Artificer. He hops the planes and dimensions and the stories. and He's that powerful. He made his own thing. He's yeah. pretty cool. Um, we really like him. Make Have fun with this class. It's, it's so interesting. It's a lot of fun. Get into it. Highly encourage it. Yeah, because this is where you can easily just go from like the crazed tinkerer. Like, you'd be Doc Brown from Back to the Future oh, or, yeah. you know, Frankenstein. Like Dr. Frankenstein. You could. There really is like no end to what you can do with it. Uh, so, but again, we can talk about stuff forever. So until we see you guys next time, detention dismissed.